there, it all comes down to Aura. It all comes down to what they think. They were trying to bait out the Brody. The Clint showed up, so no Brody. Do they still want to force the Cho? Man, the Cho, huh? Yeah. Is there a potential for us to see another like Cho roam split push situation right here? Because the team fight is looking absolutely brutal, man. I'm not sure if I would want to participate in any kind of team fight against RRQ's composition right now. I don't know. I mean, with Clint, is Cho still a viable option to go for? It's not as simple anymore against the Clint. Right. Against any kind of mobility, the Cho will definitely have some struggles. The fact that there's built-in crowd control as well. Yeah, that. And crazy peel. Remember, there's a Minotaur <laughs> export Barat Vexana. Exactly. Yeah, they don't go for it. Tigreal, though. Wow, okay. All right. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. The final form of both of these teams. Carry Nova, Pakito, Kai. Okay, how are these side lanes looking? The side lanes, the carry we've seen be very successful, Against especially Clint, in the late even? Plays. I do think that maybe she won't be able to bully the Clint, but she can definitely last in the lane without getting bullied out of the lane too often. And on the other side, it's a Pakiro against an x -Borg. I think that one's a bit tougher. Because, you know, we all know how annoying an x -Borg can be, and that could be where our RQ are trying to make plays happen. Because the jungle, it's a Barat, so it's not that kind of mobile, playmaking kind of hero. At least not in the early game. If you look at the scores right here, 6.0, lineup rating for RRQ, but Aura, they have the better counter rating. So we'll see if that stat, once again, indicates anything, Mirko. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to see the kingdom up against the dragons. Will they still be the king slayers? Aura from season 10, or will the kingdom rise up with their shoulders to go and slay the dragons? That's the question. That is the ultimate question here. And this is going to be the first time we see RQ Hoshi back at MPLID Season 13. And it looked like you're right. I mean, you brought up to the point of the indexes, right? It felt like early game to mid, RQ. Late game, RQ. So where does, R Sorry, where does Aura come into play here as Yaoi is getting heavily, heavily punished here with the damage coming in from Okta and Brusco? I think the only real advantage Aura will have Ooh. is if they go for again a split for situation and now they have an Akai, they have a Tigreal, they have a carry, all very mobile, all with slows of their own and they have the Novaria to try and help with the scouting, with the poking as well. It doesn't seem like it's a team fight composition, but if they're not careful and RRQ gets ahead, then they will be the one dictating where the fights happen and if there's going to be any space to even start split pushing. All right. Around here already marching down in the bottom side. Skylar, is he gonna get it? Mm-hmm. Arashi, no purifies at all for both teams. But that's a very bold maneuver because there's still a great chance that Aura can actually go for a big engage with the Tigreal, with the Akai as well. There's a lot of ways they can flank with the Paquito even. So for Araki to not bring any purifies, it's definitely a bold maneuver. But they do have a Minotaur, and they do have the x borg that can kind of scout out and be that sacrificial hero. So maybe that they're thinking that, okay, we can get away without doing it, but it might cost them. That, let's hope, right? Because on paper, it sounds easier said than done, but if Aura Fire is able to make things messy, that's where an RRQ can actually be faced with a problem here. Irad already on the turtle against Gugun, they're both at the same level. Heavy spin ready, that's just welcome, but it's Gugun who wins it out with the heavy spin. Now bringing Rad all the way back right now, is Yaoi's gonna be able to find an implosion on the two, bringing it back again with a knock of Octa, flickers forward, oh, Rad! With a dive to the back and a knockout strike that knocks two out, and even more in that mid lane river, a one for one. Aran still looking for Irad, it was as he was over chasing Yaoi. Yeah, has kill helping him out, but a dinosaur is a bit too tanky. And for Aura, they'll just walk out with a big victory. Man, what a terrible outcome for RRQ right there. They have the fighters, they have all the tools, right? The combo, the level 4 power spike, and the extra manpower from the Eternal Guard. And yet, they get flanked and their backline just gets decimated. And that is just not how you want this early game to play out. Looking at the emblems right here, a lot of vitalities on the side of our RQ. So they're attempting to withstand a lot of punishment. But then afterwards, I think you have to look at Skylar with 
the rupture with the weapon mastery and the Quantum Charge. He is fully intending to just scale up and delete all the members of Aura later on in the game with those items. That's the thing, right? If Aura Fire can make things messy for RRQ, that's when they shine. Talent prediction, I did not go for Aura, though. Oh. I went RRQ 2-1. I also didn't go for Aura. Really? Liar. <laughs> no, you I went did. for Aura. Because, exactly. You're getting called that, out on that, live television. That means, you know, the other side. Anyways, for Aura, is Aran finally Aranning? Did he, did he finally find the, the angle to attack? Well, the side, that flank from Oran was definitely devastating, so RRQ will definitely be looking to try and counter that in the next fight. But for now, it's still pretty even. It seems like both teams are just kind of farming around, waiting for the next play. And in a way, that kind of benefits Aura, because they have a combo of their own, they have the Akai for the neutral objective secure, and they have the Novaria for when things are not static or dynamic, at, rather, in the lanes. Mm -hmm. Aura's already setting up here. I remember Irad has had an amazing performance on the Retributions, but with Gugun and his Heavy Spin, I wonder if it can make that a little bit more favorable to his odds. He needs a time to death as well. Brusco with a flicker early there. Heavy Spin going to be used up, but Octa is the one who wins it with the Eternal Guard. Now is the implosion on the 2 oh, 3 with the help of the Astral Echo Hitbox. Three-man knockup, but it's Yaoi who ends up dying. Aran as well, now jumping on the Dawn. A good flicker out from the knockout strike as he gets sniped Ooh. down. Aran flickers out to safety in that bush. Very low, gets a double jab to get out, and Aura are able to get something back at least in that team fight. That was a back and forth situation right there, but fortunately for RRQ, Octa of all people secures a turtle. You have to wonder how that's gonna play out in the next turtle fight, but once again, they're showing that the combo does exist, and if everyone clumps up like that, if they're not caught Ooh. off guard with a big flank, then they have success. But Skylar is gonna get chunked out, and that's gonna be a recurring pattern, so his team better prepare for that. Yeah, Syndrome or Yehez's skill has been quite on point with those meteors, man. Earlier, Ronnie was able to get a kill. Now being able to make Skylar sweat a little bit in that gold lane. But that was a good performance coming from Okta, I think. For sure. I mean, seeing the turtle definitely swung the balance even further towards his team. But now Brusco is getting pushed away. It seems Ooh. like Aura are going all in on this play. Can Araku counter it though? Yeah, no flicker on Brusco, so there's no real threat of that initiation Ooh. over. And they are able to utilize this range advantage for Yehezkiel to constantly just poke Gugun, securing that gold buff, getting level 9 gears. We are approaching the last turtle. The rat poke down, not going to utilize the Detona's welcome yet. You have to take notice about the itemization though. Brusco seems to have rushed the flask of the Oasis. It's gonna be massive in the next skirmish, next objective contest, next team fight. Unless Aura can try and burn out that passage before the Lord even uh, the turtle even spawns. Five seconds to go, and it seems like Aura does have the map control for it. We'll see. Both junglers again, same level, same odds right now. But Yaoi! Oh. Flicker instantly, no hesitation even to cancel on the jump. Brusco though, two man minutes fury right now. So Heavy Spin is going to be able to pin Okta down for Aran to deal enough damage to take him down. Now Yaoi caught in the last insanity, he's going to be burnt down and melted. Kabuki in the back with the ultimate, forcing Skylar to get out and Aran is able to execute. Now Skylar, no flicker, he used it earlier. Kabuki able to maneuver away from it. Aran bringing Arad back, uh -huh. no Detonus, welcome to save him now and it's Kabuki who they give the gold to. It's a free turtle and an all-out win for the Dragons. Wow, turtle slain here by Gugun and making a ride a complete non-factor in that neutral objective trade. As it looks like Aura Fire going in. Aura Ooh. with the flanks. My lord, eternal guard from Okta though, the famous baits Ooh. that we were hyping right before the game and he does it again against Aran. I was just about to say that the Aran effect is in full effect, but then he gets taken out. Now that's a bit more momentum for RRQ, but they cannot take fights like that, man. They can only, they usually get ahead when they are the ones who are aggressing, when they are the ones who dictate what happens. Right there, Yaoi just took control over from RRQ and just wrestled it away for his team. That can be the main setting point. Brusco, maybe, might have to be a bit more aware, might be more prepared to just instantly counter-engage on that, because otherwise, it's looking to be the same situation again. Right now, Aran 
just picked up the Malefic Roar. So when he goes in for those backdoor engages that looked a little hasty earlier on, it actually might just work with the amount of damage and penetration he now has. And I think he was riding the wave on that Euphoria. For sure. If he can get that full damage build and be an absolute menace one shot in the backline, RRQ, they are very backline reliant, man. The frontliners have a lot of utility built in, but not the best of damage. And to make things worse, Yeskiel has finished his Lightning Truncheon, so if the backline gets hit by the Astral Sphere, that's nothing to scoff at. As we take a closer look at the items right here, already a Hepatocease and an Endless Battle built in for Skylar though. So against the backline, again, if he can get to them, that's a lot of true damage, that's a lot of burst. But Kabuki himself already has a Thunder Belt, and he's going for the Golden Staff already, so that passive is gonna shred the front line even more, even though Irad already has an anti -Kiris. This is the first time we've actually seen Clint being played at MPL ID Season 13. And him being so far behind Kabuki, 1,000 gold. Is he still a viable pick, Clint? I think it depends on the situation, because he is behind, but so is the rest of the team, right? It's not really a fair judgment to just, you know, uh, right off the hero just because, you know, the game isn't going in their way. We'll say the late game damage though, where the AoE might swing the, the damage numbers in favor of Skylar compared to Kabuki, that single target. And both of these teams, they're now focusing on the next future objective. That Lord is very low. Implosion onto two. Yaoi beautifully done. Aran in the back as well. It's only Irad up front to use the Dead as welcome for the anti-CC, but he still loses out to the rectory of Gugun. In MDL, his name was King Gugun, and he's certainly showing that king that he has removed from his name. He's, going, he's trying to show that king factor against the kings. That is poetic. And man, you keep talking about Aran, but look at what he did in that previous fight, man. He came in, he just found a path through the jungle. And for RRQ, they gotta start rationing the crowd control, man. They use a lot of the spells already to try and get a lead, get an advantage in the setup. But then when they use everything, including the Terrify that Okta has in that Vexana, that's where Aran strikes. He knows that the peeling tools have been expended. I thought it was a preemptive move, though, by Okta, bringing down the Eternal Guard just as the implosion hit. I think the Eternal Guard being put early on works, but then the first skill he needs to save, mm -hmm. or vice versa. If he wants to use the first skill, then he needs to save that Eternal Guard, because otherwise, what are you going to do when someone jumps on you? That's true, you just that's have to true. walk backwards. All right, non-factor. And now Aura, they're sitting at a 6,000 gold lead. A Lord is marching down in the top side. Going to be cleared down very quickly by Skylar. But it looks like Aura Fire is going to be able to get that mid side turret. Mm -hmm. You're able to get two tier twos as well on the side. Don hasn't been able to really melt these frontliners down. Oh, Retri by Irad and Gugun, but it's Kabuki who gets it. Very <laughs> interesting interaction there. Two Retries and their marksmen. 80 seconds to go though until the next Lord and RRQ for the most part. Now they're really feeling it. You're seeing how they're moving, right? Skylar and Okta always sticking near Brusco just in case Aran shows up out of nowhere. So the bush control definitely favors Aura. And if RRQ tunnels too hard onto Aran, then Yaoi has a chance to make the place happen. Gugun has a chance to get a huge pin. And Kabuki is just going to be so free to deal out that damage. He's already number one in gold, so he's fed 2-0-1 KDA so far on this carry. A hero that we can't really say is a comfort hero for him, right? I think. Carry? I don't. I think. I think it might be quite like. Um, it, it's not a bad pick for him. I think. Yesterday he, he wasn't played, able to pull on Bruno. Bruno, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then Claude was his comfort comfortable pick. Yeah, but, but he's picked up carry. So is there? If you, you remember, improvement? SPS. Oh, true. He did outplay Blacklist oh, true, with true, true, true. the carry. carry. So again. When I'm thinking about the carry, it's kind of like conflicting right now. I don't know if it is right. a comfort pick. We have seen him perform on it. So far, he is performing on it. We'll see the outcome of this game. I think it's safe to say that he knows his way around the hero, but whether or not it's a signature pick, I think it, we have to wait and see, especially with it rising now in the meta. It wasn't nearly as popular uh, back then, a couple of seasons ago. Now with the Lord back up, Aura just has all the the setup advantage right there. Already controlling the bush, and this is where the Novaria, like we said earlier, can just check out everyone. Oh, Irad walks up, the Tonus welcome! Oh, he does not get it though, he gets knocked up and shredded instead. Now Brusco 
pinned down. Optus trying to save him. Puts in the Eternal Guard, doesn't connect. Yaoi still has the Implosion, still has the Flicker. But RRQ, they disengage instantly. They know what was coming for them. They tried. They were pinned to a wall. And that was what they went for. They tried to go for 50-50 steal. But the fact is, Iran was two levels below Gugun at that point. It's so a, it was very unlikely. It's a desperate steal attempt. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. Now with the Lord, Aura has a lot of sieging potential and a lot of ways to fake out an engage and bait out spells from RRQ. And if RRQ bites on it, then that could really be the end of it. This early on, I think it, it is still possible. Octa just picked up the Divine Glaive though. It just means a lot more damage, especially for the front line. Before, it's only Skylar and Octa that... Uh, it's, it's only the front line that can really uh, absorb it, but now even the front lines are gonna feel that sting a lot more. They successfully defended that inhibitor turret. Another wave is crashing though. Dawn, I don't think he's gonna be able to clear that out as fast as he wants to. So it does fall to the hands of Aura. The fact that free one. The yeah. earlier on, like, Dawn was sacrificing himself a lot for the better of the team again and again. It means that he is quite far behind, man. Usually we see an ex work and he's, he can just stay in the front, be a bit more risky, and be kind of impudent with his positioning. But not Don. It seems like he's, at every turn, just punished for moving up and forced to back away constantly. What do you think about his performance so far, actually? Don? I think he's been just doing his thing, you know? He hasn't really done anything too special, but mm -hmm. again, that's not his fault. I feel like oh. right now, if you look at the drafts, I've been pondering, I've been looking at the whole, like, draft the last few seconds and it just looks like an AP Bren draft, does it not? It's well they did get Bren, so it makes sense. Hmm. So my question is now, is it an execution problem? Because this feels like a draft that we have seen many times before. The Clint in the gold lane for Super Marco for AP Bren. The Flap T Z, XP, X Borg as well. Let's take a look at the replay to maybe dissect if it was an execution problem, if it was a disconnect. Well, this is just Irad going in for the steal solo. Then Brusco getting stuck there, but Okta bails him out with a Terrify, zoning away with the Eternal Guard. So, if they want to make plays like that, I think it's still valid. They do have AoE combos, you know? But, again, they have to be the aggressors, they have to be, pro to be proactive with it, and they have to go together as a team. Because one by one, that really favors Aura. Because if you look at their composition, Kabuki, single target damage. Yeheskill, for the most part, the Astro Sphere, single target damage, Aran as well. So they have a lot of ways to pick up one person, but if everyone is swarming them at the same time, especially the backline, it's a lot easier said than done. So you think it's chemistry problem from RQ? Be. Ooh, an execution issue might be a problem as well. Right now we see the hand cam of King Gugun, or just Gugun now. Irad's trying to open up this space with Yowie. the stacks. He has those big guy stacks, but look at Don. No Faraga armor already, all of them revealed. And you can see Yaoi with the conceal. He's finally spotted, but it's already a Lord taken for free by Gogun. Absolutely well played in the macro division. The slow push up top, every forced error executed very well by Aura. 10,000 gold lead for Aura right now. I feel like the only real silver lining is the fact that Skylar is one item away and the Clint damage late game can make a big difference, but he doesn't have a Purify. And he's up against an Akai, a Paquito, and a Tigreal, right? There's so many ways that Aura can shut down RRQ if their game plan is literally just to bank on Skylar outputting damage. We'll see what happens as the Lord comes in and Aura is managing the waves pretty well. Again, they have great Siege. Uh-huh, Karuki. A little bit of damage in the bottom. Oh. Yaoi! With an implosion onto three! Venus Fury onto two again, but Kabuki already got the space enough to burst them down. What an initiation, what a set! But it's RQ who wins out with the backline damage dealer in Skylar. Free hitting Aran, dashes forward to bait with a flicker. Now Aran baited in, but he has a flicker also to get out. Also that immortality, they've cracked open two base turrets, one left in the bottom lane. Astral Echo again onto Brusco, but RRQ have defended. Is this the power spike? Is this the turn? There's just a big engage, but unfortunately for Yaoi, it's a three-man implosion, but Skylar wasn't involved in that. And when they were cutting backwards, you saw Aran 
and Gugun just try and make the plays happen, try to build on the in amazing initiation. But that's where the crowd control comes in. Okta was able to survive and he, the Terrify, the knockout from the Eternal Guard, really swung the fight in favor of RRQ. So now they are closer, but they're still at an 8k goal disadvantage. So it's a great start if they were trying to mount a comeback. But there's a long way to go from here. It's beautiful foresight. That's all I can say. That was beautiful foresight from both Skylar and Okta. Sure, Okta got caught, but he was still Ooh. able to flicker out in time. Sheesh. And Iran will be able to get that away from Irad. That is that's that's a low that's a low blow, bro. That's a low blow. Yeah, he was hiding in the bush, right? You would expect the boxer to just stand in front and go 50-50, but no. He's a cheeky boxer. He's a street boxer. <laughs> He's a street boxer. Streets. That's the Aran that all the Aura fans are just hoping to show up, right? Mm -hmm. The Aran that dares Ooh. to go in risky situations, great. knows his exit plans, takes, out, takes away resources away from RRQ. This is the Aran effect in full swing. But all we'll right. see if that can last, though. That's the thing. Okta just picked up a holy crystal. Look at the damage dealt. Oh, that's insane. The has kill. Where is Okta? Who hurt you? Number Ooh, five. Number five. All the way down. At this it's, point, he is very much utility. It's the poke coming in mm -hmm. from Meheskill, right? And he has been landing his shots. And that's the problem now for RQ. Like, just as they're trying to go for a setup, they're already caught a little low. It gets chaotic. And that's exactly what Aurafire wants. A chaotic RQ is something that isn't systemized to be able to land in those CC combos that Aura has. The big issue for RRQ right now as well is deciding who exactly is supposed to be in the front, who's supposed to get information and survive. Because I think initially it's supposed to be Dawn on the x board. That's usually who we see sacrifice. But Iran has been just walking up right here, taking some damage. And he's very immobile, so this becomes a dangerous Getting situation. Conceal, Yowie. Conceal on the back now, onto Irad. Jumping forward, Death Rose Welcome Implosion. Gonna be cancelled, munched up. Buddy Irad gets melted down. Oh, two-man start on the Kabuki! He's able to dash away. Yaoi's still there. Gugu and Securing the Lord. Aram with the flank right now. Is that's gonna be Skyler still in the base, waiting and clearing the way. RQ did not have the same vision for how that fight was supposed to go. They did not have him all up. That was really, really good on Kabuki. They're all followed up on that play, man. The two men stun. Maybe with a bit more damage, they could have done something, but Skylar wasn't around. So there's no way they're going to take that fight and risk it. And now with the Lord marching in, can Aura end? Ooh. Five man, Astral, Echo, Dawn pinned down right there as Kabuki makes quick work of that Faraga armor, but it is all a distraction for the Lord to be taken down. Bottom lane, pushing in, shoved in, but Kabuki doesn't have a lot of range and they're still, still going to be able to defend these uh, one base turret and keep staying alive. 20 minutes in, wow! But it's the right base turret. It is the right base turret. It's the, the one in the side lane. Mm -hmm. It's the far lane. But that's it, right? The setup coming in from Aura Fire because Aran has been so annoying. Have you seen him? He's just constantly pushing in that top lane. Skylar forced to deal with it. And now he picks up a new item. Skylar? Mm -hmm. Got the great Dragon Spear because now he, he knows he's going to get chased down. He's the only real threat that Aura has their eyes on. And he is forced to just itemize for so many things right here. He needs some magical defense, he needs some physical defense. Yeski and Oran is a deadly combo, man. Physical and magical damage, they can both one-shot your backline. So Skylar has a lot of issues to deal with himself. And on top of that, he needs to try and find windows here to really carry the game. There's only one turret left. I think for our Q, they just have to try and maybe play some mind games, man. Because if they just wait it out, it's, gonna, it's just going to be another siege yet again. All right, Yaoi's already in place. What about the items here, Rashi? Does anything stand out? Well, there's no real blade armor, actually. I would assume that, especially with a carry, there's going to be a blade armor being built for someone on the side of RRQ, but that isn't around. Of course, everyone else is building defense, and but for Iran in particular, he has the radiant armor, but you have to keep in mind that now, it doesn't stack instantly. There's, there's cooldowns before adding each stack. So it doesn't stack instantly up to six stacks anymore. So it takes a while to ramp up. Mm. So Yeskill is definitely going to be doing a lot of damage to him still. Yeskill 109 KDA so far. One of the weak links highlighted by a lot of people, but he's been performing quite well here. Very, very consistent, reliable as well. That constant damage coming through definitely is one of the deterrents that RQ Hoshi are currently facing. 
And Yaoi is still in the same position as he was. <laughs> How many seconds ago? Even a, maybe even a couple of minutes ago. Yeah. Kind of reminds you of uh, a setter like Chaknu, the guy who would sit in the bush for three minutes oh, on Kufra my. just to conceal and find an angle, or someone like Beloisky even at M5 on the TIG, rotating across the map just to circle around. And luckily he can do that. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. Yeheskill can open up the map and look for the information that is normally processed in by the roamer. And on top of that, on our queue, even if they do catch, let's say, Aran or or Gugun in the jungle, it's not like they have any meaningful catch to try and punish that, right? Everyone has very short amounts of engage. It seems like their whole plan was to just counter engage, but ooh, Oran runs into the Minotaur. But it seems like it's gonna be a free Lord, man. Yaoi with the conceal. Astral Echo already. Yaoi in the back right now. Impulsion is gonna be ready, but Irad pops into Death Sinner's Welcome, so it's only just a bait. And Irad has already used his Death Sinner's Welcome. That's it! They're going to get the free Lord because of a flank that was only a feint. The mind games. What is going on? I can see what's going on in the face of Arashi. Looks pretty disappointed, looks pretty sad that this is happening, but Aura so far outclassing our Q. We'll have to see. I mean, yeah, th there's not much you can say about that at this point. With Aura having all the cards, right? All the engages, knowing when to start the fights, having all the intel coming in from your skill as well. RRQ are just forced to play reactive, and if they do mount a comeback, it's gonna be built on the back of a mistake from Aura. I feel like at this point, that's the only way to put it, because it's not like Brusco is about to do a random minion Fury Flicker combo. It's a four-man, five-man actually. Don losing all of the Faraga armor. Gugun in the front right oh, now. Kabuki. What the rat just gets deleted, Gugun. Winner truncheon. And Immortality, he buys it. Minus Fury on two, three. Earlier, Irad still gonna be deleted off of the land of Dawn. Gogun still has it. Aran jumps in with a wooden nature. Now, oh no, he shoves him back away from the Astral Spear. That should have connected. The Winter Trunch is being bought left and right. That's gonna be Aran still surviving in the side of Skylar. Looks for the last hit, finds it. Yaoi loses his life, and Aura once again cannot finish in this game. 25 minutes in. RRQ, no base turrets, but with Whoa. a breath of life. Skylar gets shot, an Astral Meteor now. Skylar wants to look for a play here, but he has to be careful. That's another Astro oh, Rico. Oh, the shot! Oh, that would have killed him. Skylar dodges. Okay, enough, 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 enough. Yaskiel, yeah, come on. All right, three, two, four, one trade in favor of RRQ as they were able to defend it. And look at the tides completely turn. RRQ on their opposite arc looking for a base turret. But they still can't. They don't have any minions. And you see that Guggen walked up and retreated the, the cannon minion to ensure that the tower just stands that much longer. 20 seconds to go, and I feel like right now is where RRQ needs to try and look for a fight, even though they have no engage whatsoever, man. This is their period, their, their window, to try and get something with a member's advantage, but they can't do it. Aura just backs away, waits for the backup, and now it's back to the same situation. And with Aran in the picture, there's no way RRQ can force Aura into a fight. They have to wait yet again for the fight to happen in the base where their counter-engage composition can really take root. And if that happens, that's it. That's over, right? I mean, 26 minutes in already, the death timers are enough to make one mistake GG. Yeah. That's it. It's getting so much more intense now. But no way. I... Oh, He did bro. it. The Hezkill did it. <gasps> 10 and 10. If you look at the score, 1 0 and 10. Wow. Ouch. That's 4, a thousand gold lead. That's a great stat to have. Now, RRQ, once again, pulled away by the split push, by the Iran effect. I think they might just let it go. If they want to risk it, this is going to be a huge risk. They risk getting backdoored, and they also risk the straight out losing right here without being able to catch the more prior members from the side of Aura. I think they might just have to let it go. Let's see. I mean, Don is giving information. Irad's already on standby, but Yaoi oh. too. Don losing the Faraga oh. armor. Getting shot down again. No Faraga armor. Irad now has been delegated the job to open up this side of the map. Skylar earlier was able to get a good shot on Aran, but he's still slow pushing that mid and the top side. He's always just staying out of the vision pocket. So that RRQ will be constantly thinking, where is this Paquito? Are they flanking? Yaoi as well doing yeah, the same thing. Gugun is holding on to the Lord. Irad. Taking control. But they're going for they it. want to commit right now. Paquito's up top already in vision. Irad versus 
go good, but it's yes, Kale! What? Who finds it now? It's Iradu! Falls to Kabuki and Yowie! Finds an implosion to bring them back! Say goodbye to Brusco, say goodbye to Irad! The two imports taken down by Aura now, and only the Indonesians left to defend. Don Skyler and Okta. They have the wave clear. They have the wave clear. Do they have enough firepower in them to defend this? The Lord is already marching in that mid side. Brusco and Irad, their main frontliners, are gone. He has skills already going in. Gugun Yaoi, they're looking for their timing. Oh, he has skill. What? He walks up, loses his life, but it's all just a bait right now. It's Kabuki will save target with the nature and the Lord. They needed a miracle to defend that, and they won't be able to create one. Aura secures game one over the Kings of Kings. Ladies and gentlemen, Eterna is grinning at me. No, I'm not.